Dear friends, welcome to this episode of the video lecture series being broadcasted by Indian Space Research Organization in connection with the World Space Week celebrations. Myself, Kiran Mohan and my team will be taking you on a trip through the fascinating world of satellites today. Through this video, we will try to create an insight about the satellite technology and its applications. We will also discuss as to how the satellite technology was able to bring in a silent revolution of communication in the nation, thereby increasing the standard of living of our citizens. So welcome again to this short video lecture on satellite and its applications. This short video is basically divided into five major sections. In the first section, we will try to understand the basics of satellites and the basic concepts with which satellites works on. Next, we will touch upon the satellite orbits, that is different types of orbits to which satellite goes to and how these orbits are important to the functioning of the satellites. In the third section, we will have a peep into the satellite inside the satellite and then we will try to understand how a satellite is made, tested and how it actually functions. Then we will move on to some applications of satellites and we will see how satellites touch each one of our lives in our day to day living. We will also talk about some special missions that were undertaken by ISRO in satellite technology. You would have noticed by now that satellites are objects or man made missions that goes out of the atmosphere which provides not just shade, but it provides protection to everything on the surface of Earth. Now, a real understanding of the environment in which the satellite has to work is essentially required if a satellite is to be designed perfectly and if it has to function flawlessly. Atmosphere is in fact like a blanket for Earth. It protects us from harmful radiations, it protects us from meteorites, meteors and all those particles that tries to bombard the earth from heavens above. So let us try to understand the environment in which satellites usually works. As we move up in the atmosphere from the earth's surface, we find that the atmosphere starts to thin out. The pressure of the atmosphere falls gradually and at around 100 kilometers, all the effects of atmosphere like the wind drag and the wind velocities, everything comes down to near negligible values. This line is called as the Karman line and above the Karman line, we assume the atmosphere is not there in for practical purposes. So satellites are bound to work above the Karman line and satellite orbits starts from around 200 kilometers and moves up. So satellites in fact works in deep vacuum. As mentioned earlier, atmosphere acts like a blanket for Earth. It protects us from a lot of atrocities of deep space like extreme temperature shifts, deep vacuum, the radiations and charged particles. In fact, the magnetic field of Earth is key to protecting it, protecting us from the solar wind. Let us see one after the other all these parameters. The first challenge that one needs to keep in mind while deciding a satellite and does its orbit is the vast amount of debris that is available in space. Satellites cannot be designed to withstand this debris hits but can the orbits can be made such that it can bypass debris fields. International laws are being introduced in the recent years to reduce the number of debris in space. The next challenge that a satellite designer has to keep in mind is the extreme temperature variations in space. On the Earth's surface, it is in fact the atmosphere that equalizes the temperatures on in the night side as well as on the day side of the earth. When we measure temperatures, it, we are actually measuring the temperature of the atmosphere of earth and not the surface of earth. If atmosphere was lost, 
the sun, the face of earth that faces the sun would be extremely hot whereas the night side of earth would go extremely cold this effect is there for satellites also the face of the satellite that faces the sun heats up whereas the face that is in its shadow it becomes very cold to regulate the temperatures we have special heat pipes as well as thermal protection schemes being implemented in satellites the same thing goes for charged particles specialized protections are required to for protecting the electronics of the satellites from charged particles that is not now shielded by the atmosphere i need not dwell upon the effect of zero gravity on satellites zero gravity is yet another challenge that has to be overcome by satellite designers deep vacuum is yet another challenge all satellites are in fact designed to withstand deep vacuum and the components are specifically selected to avoid degassing special materials are also used to prevent satellites from degrading in the emptiness of space satellites as you all know works from a constrained orbit satellites moves around the earth in a specified orbit and works from that orbit and the orbit to which a satellite is inserted into depends upon the type of satellite that we are designing for example earth observation satellites or the remote sensing satellites which is which are used to map the surface of the earth or to collect data from the surface of the earth are usually put into a low earth orbit ranging from 200 kilometers in altitude to almost like 800 kilometers in altitude most of these goes into an orbit called as sun synchronous polar orbit whereas a few others are going to other inclinations also the communication satellites which has to be above us around the clock are usually put into a special orbit called as geostationary orbit and that orbit is a circular orbit around the equator at around 36000 kilometers now let us try to understand how a satellite remains in a stable orbit around the earth without firing its thrusters continuously for a better understanding let us do a thought experiment assume that you have a cannon that is placed atop a hill as shown in the figure above now assume that you are shooting a cannon ball from this cannon at first when you shot the cannon it was having some velocity and the ball fell at a point a in the picture think what would happen if i increase the velocity of this object or the cannon ball in fact here as the velocity increases two things happens one is the cannon ball starts to fall at a farther distance and this distance at which the cannon ball falls increases with increase in velocity now the first point of hit was a and when the velocity increased the point of hit became b now if you consider the trajectory or the curve through which your cannon ball is passing through in atmosphere you understand that with increase in velocity the curvature of this trajectory also is increasing now if you think or extrapolate this thought experiment there will be one velocity at which the curvature of the trajectory of the cannon ball will become equal to the curvature of the earth this point is noted by the trajectory c in our slide now at this particular velocity what will happen is the cannon ball would never touch the earth surface because the curvature of the cannon ball's trajectory and the earth's curvature are equal this cannon ball would eventually come and hit at the back of your head of course this is a thought experiment for this to work the cannon ball will have to be fired at around 9 kilometers per second velocity which is near impossible with this small thought experiment one can understand how a satellite remains in orbit it is in fact taken to a very high altitude well above the atmospheric drag 
and is given a tangential velocity so that it remains in orbit around the earth space technology in india was originally envisioned by none other than vikram a sarabhai sarabhai's dream of developing the nation through advances in science and technology was the real energy behind the creation of isro he believed that none of the technology becomes meaningful until its use is felt by the commonest of the common man and it can be used for the benefit of the poorest of the poor farmers and other common man of india these words has always been the leading light of isro in line with this ideology isro has always given thrust in developing satellites that would try solve the real problems of man and society rather than going for explorations and other scientific purposes now let us understand various satellite orbits first let us get introduced to the polar satellite orbit a satellite is said to be in a polar orbit when it moves in an orbit which passes through the poles of the earth as you would know earth has two poles the north and the south pole and the earth rotates about the axis passing through these two poles now our polar satellite is actually moving from pole to pole and you can see from the figure that the earth is rotating inside this orbit now as a polar satellite moves in its orbit it is able to trace the yellow path that is shown in the figure and it is able to cover that track through its instruments these satellites are basically used for remote sensing purposes or for cartography that is photographing the earth's surface polar satellites are usually launched to low earth orbits like 200 ranging from 200 to almost 800 kilometers now these satellites as it moves in its orbit and as the earth rotates inside this orbit you can see that it is able to cover the entire surface of the earth maybe in two or three of its orbital revolutions you would also understand that this satellite is always moving with respect to the earth surface and it is only able to come above a particular point of the earth once in every two or three orbits only so that the service of this satellite is not available throughout the day polar satellites as i mentioned are used for cartography purposes and for photographing the earth's surfaces many instruments that does remote sensing that is measuring something remotely are attached to the satellite and this data is collected at regular intervals these satellite data actually helps in predicting weather phenomena and many other resources like like the ion depositions which gives you the maneuverability or the crop cultivation requirements of the fields we have also used this data to improve the fish catch of the fishermen of india now these satellites does not have a flash and you know when you take a photograph you require a source of light or a flash for doing so these satellites in fact uses sun as a flash and so we use these satellites or we put these satellites into an orbit called as sun synchronous polar orbit which means that every time you click the photo of a particular region of earth with this satellite the sun will be constant in its apparent position with respect to the point on the earth and the satellite or the sun act as a constant source of light with some relative angle to the point which is covered by the satellite the indian remote sensing satellite series has been very successful in all regards the data collected by the indian remote sensing satellites have been used globally for predicting weather and other resources we have also used our satellites for covering disaster struck areas and for helping or monitoring the disaster management activities the next orbit that we will talk about is the geosynchronous orbit when i say that 
remember it is geosynchronous the term suggest that it is in synchronization with earth by that we mean that the orbital period of the satellite is equal to the earth's rotation period which means that when earth rotates one time about its axis or earth completes one rotation about its axis the satellite would have completed one revolution around the earth about its own axis now these satellites would always move with respect to the earth in a constant synchronization which means that you will have this satellite above your head all the time whether it be day or night 24 by 7 this satellite will be above your head geosynchronous satellite does not mean that the satellite will have to be fixed at a position in the sky but instead it could have an anelemic pattern in the sky while it moves from one point to the other in time geostationary satellites are a special kind of geosynchronous satellites in geostationary satellites what we do is the inclination of the orbit or the angle between the orbital plane of the orbit and the equator is made zero so essentially a geostationary orbit is a geosynchronous orbit which is parallel to the equator all geosynchronous orbits will be at an altitude of 36000 kilometers geostationary satellites are usually used for communication purposes but is not bound to be used only for communication purposes we do have a few meteorological satellites that is weather monitoring satellites also launched to this geostationary or geosynchronous orbits geosynchronous orbit is widely used for the navic constellation or the navigational aiding constellation of isro apart from these two orbits there are many other satellite orbits we have special orbits called as molnia and there are other orbits called as tundra which are which are all specific orbits used for specific purposes due to the time limitation i am not going to explain all these orbits in detail but you can easily find details of these orbits from the internet please do keep in mind that the orbit selection of satellites is a very important feature in deciding the usability and the life of the satellite we also use something called as a highly elliptical orbit which is which is used for transfer orbits that is for transfer from earth to some other planets like the mars as we did for the mars orbiter mission and also for the chandrayaan missions now this artistic rendition of different satellites in orbit of earth is a depiction of how crowded space is the lower earth orbits are heavily crowded while the geostationary satellite orbits you can see it is less crowded now this happens because in the geostationary orbit there are slots allowed for different countries to specifically insert their satellites into and you cannot put the satellite into geostationary orbits wherever you please this increase in the number of satellites and crowding of space is of great concern in the recent times because of the collision probabilities between the satellites we use something called as collision avoidance algorithms to monitor the satellite collision events and also take satellites to different orbits for a short while of time to avoid collision with another satellite this threat however exists and internationally there are measures being taken right now to avoid such events in future let us now see how a satellite is built what is there inside a satellite and how satellites are tested and cleared for launch if you cut open a satellite you would see a photo something similar to this a satellite consists of structural elements propulsion systems powering systems and other avionics along with the payload if you look at the satellite by mars the payload of a satellite will be a very small quantity ranging from 1% to 2% by mass 
the rest 96 to 98 percent of the satellite consists of all the structural elements and other elements that are required for housekeeping and for the proper functioning of the satellite. Satellite, as I mentioned, has got powering systems with solar panels and other electronic components. It has batteries of its own, which gets powered and recharged by the solar panels. The propulsion systems of a satellite include both thrusters for orbit racing maneuvers and small thrusters for steering purposes. These thrusters are usually powered by earth storable propellants. These earth storable propellants are liquid propellants stored in two tanks and are pressurized. The pressurized liquid comes in contact with each other and spontaneously ignites. Such propellants are called as hypergolic propellants. Apart from these propellants, we also use monopropellants like hydrazine or H2O2 which decomposes to produce hot gases. Now these gases are expelled through a nozzle to generate thrust. India has developed LAM engines which is of 440 Newton thrust and 800 Newton thrust respectively for use in its satellites. 440 Newton thrusters are 440 Newton engines are usually used for all satellite orbit racing maneuvers, where an 800 Newton LAM engine is special LAM engine used for specialized applications like lunar landing. Small thrusters used for steering produces thrust from 1 Newton to almost like 22 Newtons. Now these thrusters are used in multiple numbers and are placed at different corners or different locations as in binary pairs to be used as control mechanisms. Apart from all these systems, you have payloads and antennas for communicating with the satellite. The payload differs from for different satellites and it depends upon what the satellite is intended to do. All these instruments and avionics are housed inside a structure which forms a structural element and which holds the satellite in place. Now you have a lot of avionic components inside these satellites. The electronic components of these avionic systems are vulnerable to radiations. As mentioned earlier in one of the lectures, Earth has atmosphere to protect us from the solar radiations, whereas satellites being in vacuum of space does not have this protective atmospheric shield. We replicate this shield by using something called as the multi-layer insulation or the MLI. MLI or the multi-layer insulation consists of different layers of different polymers which are each designed to restrict some radiation from entering inside the satellite. The golden foil that you see around a satellite covering it entirely is called the MLI. This as I mentioned earlier is not gold but it looks golden once the polymers are all set in place. You have multiple layers of polymers and are, these are specifically designed for specific uses in specific satellites. The number of layers and the properties of the layers also differs for different applications. In totality, the multi-layer insulation or the MLI helps the satellite to be protected from the radiations that is there in the outer space. It not only keeps the radiations out, it also helps in keeping the thermal balance of the systems inside the satellite. The satellite systems consist of propulsion systems and transducers also. The propulsion systems not only consist of thrusters, but as mentioned earlier, it consists of different tankages also for storing propellants. Different satellites requires different amount of propellant and we have propellant tanks ranging from 30 litres to almost 1207 litres in volume. We use a multitude of transducers and other systems also for satellites. The satellite thruster systems consisting of 440 Newton thrust LAM engines and AOCS thrusters for steering purposes are designed and developed at the Liquid Propulsion System Center of ISRO. LAM engine, the 440 Newton version of LAM engine in fact, holds the world record 
for the only engine to have reignited after the dormancy period of 8 months in the Mars Orbiter mission. LAM engine has been indigenously developed since the 1980s and is the first ever liquid engine to be completely built in India. Spacecrafts are tested in many ways. We have mechanical testings like the solar panel testings, antenna deployment test, we have environmental testing and illumination checks. All these tests are done in specialized test facilities in the URSC or the SDSC sharp that is Sri Harikot. After all these tests, we find whether the satellite is worth the launch or not. These tests are so devised that it ensures that the satellites are tested to the maximum conditions to which it is exposed to in the vacuum of space. Environmental testing facility that is a vacuum chamber in fact generates very low atmospheric pressures or near vacuum conditions inside this huge chamber and the satellite is placed inside with thermal radiations being bombarded onto the satellite as it would be in simulations. Now these data are used to assess the health of the satellite before launching into space. The testing of these satellites with these very novice equipments help us to avoid non-functional satellites from reaching into. Once the testing of the satellite is completed, the satellite is taken and is placed inside the heat shield of the rocket. The heat shield protects the satellite the delicate satellite from the vagaries of a rocket launch. As the rocket's ascends high up in the air, the thick atmosphere leads to atmospheric drag and friction. Atmospheric friction leads to heating and the temperature could rise well above 2000 Kelvin. Satellite systems are not designed to take up this much heat and aerodynamic drags. Heat shield protects the satellite from aerodynamic drag and heat. Once the rocket clears the thick atmosphere, almost at 115 kilometers, the heat shield or the payload fairing is jettisoned off and the satellite comes out of this cocoon. Now let us see some applications of space and satellite and how these applications have transformed the lives of the common man of our nation. Like rockets, the satellite technology in India also evolved step by step. ISRO took up experimental satellites in its initial launches and these experimental satellites consisted of Aryabhatta, Bhaskara and a series of Rohini satellites. These satellites if you could see are covered with solar panels all around so that whatever be the orientation of the satellite, the satellite is getting powered. Later on with these experiments we found out or we learned the different techniques of controlling a rocket orientation and attitude and then we went on to satellites with like SROs where the solar panels are only limited to a few numbers and are specifically chosen. Now there were experimental satellites like the Apple which was the first ever trans satellite to be transmitting television signals on an experimental basis. Studies on these experimental satellites which were launched by launch vehicles across the globe only helped us understanding the space and the vagaries of the space much better. With these understandings only, we went ahead with the development of the later satellites which were used for commercial as well as scientific purposes. India develops and launches a host of satellites and different types of satellites are included in these. The major classification goes like communication satellites, remote sensing satellites, scientific satellites, experimental satellites and navigational satellites. Communication satellites as the name suggests are used for communication purposes. Initially we used to have the INSAT series or the Indian National Satellite series which were launched to the geostationary orbits. Now these satellites are used in many applications like telecom, meteorology and broadcasting. Remote sensing satellites are smaller class of satellites which are launched to the sun synchronous polar orbit or low earth orbits. 
These satellites are used for a multitude of remote sensing applications. Land mapping, resource surveys and ocean studies are a few of their applications. Indian remote sensing, as told earlier, is world famous for its accuracy and resolution. The data collected by the Indian remote sensing satellite has been used worldwide for many applications ranging from disaster management to weather predictions. Apart from remote sensing satellites and communication satellites, which are the satellites that are used for the benefit of the common man, we are also undertaking special scientific missions. The Chandrayaan-1, Mangalyaan and Chandrayaan-2 missions are some of examples. Now, these scientific missions are done only once in a while because even now the motto of ISRO is to serve the common man. The scientific satellites of India has always been the pride of India. Chandrayaan-1 finding the treasure trove of data that are collected by these scientific missions have triggered the imaginations of a million scientific minds across the globe. Apart from the well-known Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan missions, India has also undertaken very specific scientific missions like Astrosat and Meghatropics. Astrosat is the only satellite available in the world which does multispectral analysis of stars and the heavens above. Meghatropics, on the other hand, was an Indo-French collaborative project for understanding the tropical weather patterns, especially the monsoon. Experimental satellites like GSAT-2, the spacecraft recovery experiment, GSAT-11, etc. and navigational satellites like Gagan and IRNSS are also in the ISRO satellite series. In the present day, it is impossible to imagine a world without satellites. With or without your knowledge, satellites are touching your lives in a many ways. Did you know that every time you swipe an ATM card, a satellite is involved? Did you know that the entire banking system relies on satellite communications? Well, satellite touches your life in many ways, known or unknown to you. The GPS navigation aid in your phones, the telecommunication pathways available to you, the weather predictions that is done to protect you from cyclones, everything comes as data from satellites. So you cannot imagine a world without satellites in the present day. Now let us see some specific applications of specific satellites. The INSAT series satellites, one of the most successful series of satellites in India, has been used for many applications like telecommunication, radio networking, meteorological purposes, TV broadcasting, satellite news gathering, etc. A host of cyclone warning systems also derives data from the INSAT series. A notable application is in cyclone warning service. The eastern coast of India is prone to cyclones in the months of October and November. The coastline of Orissa and Andhra Pradesh and some parts of West Bengal are always affected by these cyclones. Cyclones by nature are unpredictable. The path that the cyclone traces cannot be predicted until the latest information or the latest data about its position, location and its current path is known at every point of time. Satellites are used to constantly monitor the development of the cyclones and these informations are used to predict the path of the cyclone. Rescue operations by transporting people or evacuating people from the probable regions of cyclone hits have always helped reduce the death toll of such events. Remote sensing satellites has multitude of applications, which ranges from agriculture to water resources to environment protections to soil management, disaster management, geosciences, forests and whatnot. These applications are in fact touching millions of farmers and fishermen across India through land map surveys and fishery catch surveys. 
Let us now see a few such examples where the satellite technology has brought in tremendous progress in common man's life. One such application where the Indian satellite systems, especially the remote sensing satellite systems, were able to bring a change in common man's life is in the prediction of potential fishing zones. Resosats, Oceansats and other such satellites are used to collect data about the color of the ocean surface from which the availability of phytoplankton in certain regions of the sea can be noted. These data is used to predict the potential fishing areas or the potential fishing zones. The fishermen are directed towards these potential fishing zones thereby increasing their catch. This project was undertaken by ISRO in union with the fisheries department of different coastal states and has been a tremendous success in increasing the fish catch of all fishermen. The data is disseminated through the fisheries department and each of the fishermen are given satellite based communication systems to update their catch. Presently, the Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services is providing this data to the fishermen. Data from the satellites are also used for land maps and also for estimating the glacier reaches and the movement of glaciers in Himalayas. The changes in the river patterns and the changes in the environmental conditions are also mapped with remote sensing satellites. Terrain mapping and mapping of different regions of India for different applications are also undertaken by the satellites of ISRO, especially the remote sensing satellites. These images are not only taken from India, but for the entire globe as per request. You can see different photos which we have taken with our satellites of different regions of the nation. Now, Multitude of applications for remote sensing also can be seen through these slides. Many of these are known to you, some are unknown to you, but we do touch your life at different ways in different ways, known or unknown to you. In par with the Google Maps and other geospatial mapping available in the internet, India has her own mapping application called Bhuvan. Bhuvan is in fact the India's gateway to geospatial world. Taking this geospatial world one step ahead, in ISRO has interfaced this Bhuvan application with a multitude of departments across India. It can be used for visualization, for data archival, for thematic services and geoprocessing services. Many departments of the central government and the state governments of India have derived the benefits from Bhuvan. Did you know that there is an application in Bhuvan for students called as School Bhuvan? School Bhuvan application. You can actually plot all the maps that are available in your geography textbooks using the satellite data from our current satellites. It will give you a complete new experience of learning geography and many other science streams including chemistry and physics through experiments and experimental modules. School Bhuvan has been a great success with kids all around India and we would suggest that you also try School Bhuvan if you have not tried it yet. IRNSS or the Indian Regional Satellite Navigation System is an autonomous navigation system developed for the Indian region. Using a constellation of 7 to 11 IRNSS satellites, Navic application has been enabled. This application works more or less like Google Maps and you can use it for all navigational purposes. The satellite constellation is complete and the ground systems are under processing right now. Now, let us see some special missions which has been undertaken by ISRO in the satellite application region. The first of this series would be the Chandrayaan-1 mission. Chandrayaan-1 is the first ever mission of ISRO to have orbited another object other than Earth. Chandrayaan was a very successful mission wherein we were the first nation 
to have detected water on the surface of moon. Chandrayaan-1 had payloads from all over the globe and the payload data has enabled scientists in understanding the evolution of Earth and the moon to a great extent. To be successful in the maiden launch to the moon by itself is a great achievement. ISRO was able to accomplish this task even with the low capacity rockets that we had by using a specialized maneuver wherein the orbit was raised multiple times by the satellite thruster firings. Now this maneuver was again used in the Mars Orbiter mission later. Chandrayaan-1 was a great success because all its payload worked flawlessly and we were able to collect almost all the data that we really wanted to. The data that was collected by the Chandrayaan-1 orbiter mission was key in discovering the hydroxyl molecules on the surface of moon. This itself testifies the success of the Chandrayaan mission. The world famous Mars Orbiter mission is yet another success story. India became the first ever nation to have achieved Martian orbit in the first attempt when Mars Orbiter mission or the Mangalyan probe started revolving around Mars. The scientific objectives included understanding the surface features of Mars like morphology, topology and mineralogy and to study the dynamics of upper atmosphere of Mars and its effects on the other solar wind and other phenomena. The Mars Orbiter mission, as mentioned earlier, departed from Earth on December 1st, 2013 and reached Mars eight months later when the Mars insertion, Mars orbit insertion was done on September 24th in 2020. After leaving the Earth's sphere of influence, a series of mid-course corrections were done to correct the attitude and the trajectory of the Mars Orbiter mission and pointing it towards Mars. Many beautiful pictures and data collected by the Mars Orbiter mission have been used for scientific purposes since 2014. AstroSat is India's multi-wavelength astronomy satellite. It is the first satellite to be developed and launched for astronomy purposes. AstroSat is a multi-wavelength astronomy mission and is placed at a 650 km near equatorial orbit. It actually carries five astronomical payloads, each of them having different spectral capabilities. The main scientific focus of this mission is to simultaneously cover or monitor the intensity variations in cosmic sources and it is the first satellite to have this capability. The data from AstroSat is still under review by different agencies across the globe. 